Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about group transfer reactions, which are a sort of a loosely based a category of uh, paracyclic reactions that don't necessarily fit easily into other categories. And the first thing that I'm going to tell you before I go over what we're going to go over here is that not all organic chemists are necessarily going to agree with me that every one of these reactions is a group transfer reaction. Um, so I, I apologize if that creates some confusion, um, but from my understanding of what a group transfer reaction is, all of these things are group transfer reactions. Some of these are reactions you may already be familiar with in terms of you know, reactions you've learned about in the addition reactions of alkenes, uh, and some of them might be new. First, let's try to define uh, what a group transfer reaction is, and then I'll go over these five different examples. All right. so, so this is a paracyclic reaction. All right. So it has all of the features of the paracyclic reaction. All right. So that is cyclic transition state and a concerted mechanism. But what is different about a group transfer reaction is that we have some or all atoms transferred from one reactant to another. And we're going to see that some of these things um, look like they might almost be cycloadditions except for they fail to be cycloadditions. So they're either the product isn't a cyclic molecule or the um, product might be a cyclic molecule, but not everything from the reactant was transferred in the addition reaction. Okay? Most of these are addition reactions of some kind. So let's look at these uh, five examples. And the first one that I want to do describe for you are the onium ions. Uh, these, these are intermediates that form in, say, like the electrophilic bromination of, or chlorination of an alkene. Um, and so you, you are, and depending on where you are in your studies, there's a pretty good chance that you are familiar with this reaction. But the intermediate, oh, and I put Chlorine. My apologies here. Okay. But the intermediate in this reaction is a three-membered ring intermediate with positive charge. So let's draw that. Okay. And I'm actually going to do an example of this mechanism really quickly. I'm going to do all of these mechanisms because they're all pretty straightforward. Uh, but I'm going to do it on, I'm actually going to do it on cyclohexene so I can reinforce the stereochemical outcome, which is uh, a hallmark of paracyclic reactions. Right? Paracyclic reactions, because they are concerted with cyclic transition states, they all have a, a they're all stereospecific in some way. Right? And if you're familiar with this reaction, this mechanism is going to be relatively familiar to you. But, you know, this mechanism has some features of a kilotropic cycloaddition. It's it's a alkene plus another plus another molecule forming a three-membered ring. But the difference is is that there's also this loss of leaving group where the bromine-bromine bond breaks. Oops, bromine. There you go. And it's this first step of the reaction that's the group transfer reaction. The second step of the reaction is, a, is an SN2 ring opening kind of reaction. It's this first step that it is a group transfer. One of the atoms, bromine, is transferred to the product, but not all of the atoms in the reactant are transferred. Epoxidation reactions are actually a similar kind of, of situation. And again, epoxidation reactions are stereospecific. And like if you start with a peroxy acid or like a peroxy carboxylic acid, a good example is that MCPBA, metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, that a lot of people use. Uh, 
But really, honestly, lots of peroxy acids are capable of doing this thing. You get an epoxide out of this, and this is also kind of a group transfer reaction. One of the oxygen atoms from the peroxy acid ends up in the structure of the product, but the others don't. So let's look at that mechanism. See, see how it looks, you know, pericyclic. Here's my oxygen atom. Oops. Hydrogen. Other oxygen atom. And this reaction kind of looks like it's two pericyclic reactions going on at once. So there's this kind of kilotropic looking thing where uh, the alkene and this extra oxygen react with each other. But then there's also... And actually, I, I want to... I want to have this arrow coming out here. There's also this other reaction that is occurring in the on the other side and uh, some people will refer to this as kind of a butterfly mechanism because it's got things going on pericyclic things going on in two things two places uh, kind of like a butterfly's wings but it is a pericyclic reaction but it's in, even though the product is cyclic it's a group transfer reaction because we are transferring one atom from the peroxy acid. Only one atom, not the whole thing. So, you know, as far as cyclohexene is concerned, maybe it is a cycloaddition, but it's ultimately also a group transfer reaction. The mylas or mylas, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Melis dihydroxylation is a variation of the dihydroxylation with osmium tetroxide. But it's one of these variations that are catalytic in osmium tetroxide. So only a very small amount of the very toxic osmium tetroxide is used. And this one is done uh, using hydrogen peroxide as the terminal oxidant. There are other variations here. Let me get my alkene back here. And this is a reaction that generates a syn diol. Now it's worth noting that the stoichiometric osmium tetroxide reaction is a cyclo it does have a cycloaddition step at the beginning. It's a 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition. But this reaction has a different mechanism that's kind of, of interesting. The osmium tetroxide and the hydrogen peroxide react together to form. Uh, a different active osmium species. OH. O, OH. And it's a little bit tricky to, to draw because there are like five oxygen atoms on this osmium now. That looks kind of terrible, but here we are. And actually, let's see. I think I want to have... I don't want to have this one. And it's the first step of this mechanism that's the group transfer mechanism. And so the alkene forms a new bond with this extra OH group, which then kind of has this cascading change throughout the uh, osmium, compo osmium complex. And the intermediate that forms initially has one OH group on it and one osmium or the osmium thing still attached to it. Oh, that's O4H. And this thing 
falls apart to make the syndiol and regenerates osmium tetroxide. So it's this first step that's actually a group transfer reaction. Here, all of the atoms, atoms of the osmium reagent end up in the structure of the product, but the product isn't a, a, a cyclic molecule. And these other two examples that I have for you are, are similar in this regard. So one of them is probably familiar, the hydroboration reaction. Um, this is a reaction where you have a boron compound, a borane of some kind, but, but BH3 is the simplest one. It undergoes a concerted addition with hydrogen like a, acting as a nucleophile. I need a different size arrow, here we go. And the boron acting as an electrophile, but really it's a concerted, re it's a concerted mechanism with a cyclic transition state. And we know that because we also know the stereochemical outcome is you know, there is a single stereochemical outcome here that is syn addition across that alkene pi bond. And, and then, you know, boranes, some of them can be used just as they are. They have all kinds of applications, and then you're probably familiar with oxidizing them to make alcohols. And then finally, the final one of these uh, examples here is something called the Ene reaction. And the Ene reaction is a fairly uh, specialized thing. It is a reaction between ethene or, or another alkene and, you know, between two alkene molecules. But the overall mechanism involves one alkene coming and grabbing this hydrogen and then a, a rearrangement of the electrons in the pi system to form a new sigma bond. And the molecule ends up, you know, the hydrogen that got moved ends up here. We do end up having an alkene still in the structure. Right? And again, it looks like it might be a cycloaddition, but the product's not cyclic. So all of the atoms in the Ene and enophile end up in the structure of the product, um, but you know you've got it's not cyclic. The ene reaction. There's there are other examples of the ene reaction with different substituents on them, um, but it's a fairly specialized reaction that only goes in a limited number of cases. Some of these other group transfer things are probably more familiar. So I thank you for watching this video on group transfer reactions. I believe this is my final video in a series on paracyclic reactions. If you've watched all of them, thank you. Or if this is the only one you've come and found, that works too. Uh, thank you for watching.